Finalmente a gente chegou para mostrar uh, como é que uh, uh, tem uh, de, uh, desenhos uh, no padrão do artesanato corporal e esses desenhos são desenhos uh, desenhados com artesanato que é para fazer rede, para fazer a bolsa, é, bolsa que eu tenho aqui, que eu trouxe aqui. Já vai ter uma bolsa. Eu tenho a oportunidade de falar sobre os drawings, os canais, que são os que chamam a língua dos espíritos, a língua do Yushibu, é como like o seu vocabulário. And you, you can find them on our clothes, uh, so woven, as well as painted on the bodies and on ceramics. And on the necklaces? Necklaces, yeah. All kinds of Co uh, colari, pulsera, uh, ceramica, cestaria, que mais que faz? Vários the body, pequenos, ceramics, uh, and yeah. other kinds of eles são um desenho baseado na, no animal, uh, como pata de onça, como uh, eu falo você, pois, é, pata de onça, olho de curica, que é olho de pássaro, uh, desenho baseado no planta, que é espinho de esperaí, braço de macaco, rabo de jacaré, uh, flor uh, das plantas. Uh, então, Todo o desenho veio através do ensinamento da jiboia e também veio o ensinamento da aranha, que é o pequeno... Aqui hoje, não é qualquer aranha, aquele aranha que desce, que você vê depois que choveu, que vai fazer no telha, foi aquela aranha que ensinou para as mulheres. Então, você pode encontrar muitos tipos de desenhos, eles são todos baseados em animais e plantas. Então, você tem, por exemplo, o crocodile tail, ou o alligator tail, the butterfly, the flower, the baja jones, uh, the j jaguar, not jaguar, whatever, the big cat. Um, it's a jaguar. Paw. It yeah, is. The paw, the jaguar paw. The jaguar paw, bird's the eye. bird's eye, and each drawing, all these drawings were taught by the anaconda as well. And the weaving was taught by a spider, and he says it's a particular weaving spider. And uh, the... All these drawings, you can find them, the, the shaman say that you find them on the back of the anaconda itself. So you can find all the drawings of nature there on the back of the anaconda. And they extract, they extract 25 major drawings, and from those they have all different kinds of combinations. So they're like infinite different kinds of patterns. designs, patterns. Um, That's the monkey, uh, monkey uh, art. Uh, <laughs> Então, uh, esse principal uh, roupas tradicionais são esses. That's the main ritual. traditional ritual, uh, ritual clothes. Na, aqui, aqui são um braço, uh, espinho esperaí. Esse é o espinho, this is the espinho esperaí. It's my favorite pattern, because I'm always rushing everywhere, and this pattern, it's, it's this um, um, thorny plant that holds onto your pants while you're rushing through the forest and tells you to calm down. <laughs> so that's the wait a minute thorn. <laughs> Literally translated to the uh, Esse mesmo desenho é um desenho uh, corporal com o uh, Eu tenho alguns fotos meus que quando, toda vez que eu vou pra, volto para minha comunidade, eu volto para visitar minha uhum. família, uh, eles me recebem com pintura corporal que é genipapo, né? você pinta se todo o corpo, perna, braço, rosto. Quando eu estou lá, eu sou cachinawa, não sou esse bunny coelho. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he goes to this, to back to his tribe, he is received with genipapo paint and urukum with the designs, the kind of designs, and he dresses as the traditional clothes, not as a bunny rabbit when he's here in the U.S. <laughs> That's what you said, I'm trying to. Uh, o artesanato é feito manual, não, é, não tem muita tecnologia. Nossa tecnologia é tudo feito artesanal. It's all manual, uh, we don't have any technologies. We just... Essa é a pata de onça, né? Essa é a pata de onça. Essa é a pata de onça.
And each drawing brings a specific energy and a specific intention. So if you have the Chedebeu, which is the bird's eye, it's used for clarity in vision, so you can put that on. If you have these beams, but oh, it's supposed to calm you down. Every every pattern brings in a different quality. O algodão, né, que é esse tecido, é tudo plantado, né? Planta os homens, planta, faz roça, planta. O que encolhe são as mulheres. Então tem trabalho de é, diferentes é, sexos, né? Uh -huh. O homem faz um trabalho, uma um parte do trabalho, outra parte do trabalho são as mulheres que são produção de ir para a roça, tirar a, o algodão, bater algodão, fiar algodão, é, tecer algodão. Né, e depois em que sai esses né, bolsa, tiara. Então é um processo, né? Um processo que eu tenho uma grande admiração, não só porque eu sou Kashinawa, mas eu tenho uma grande admiração pelos trabalhos que elas produzem, porque só elas que produzem. Uhum. Nós fazemos outras partes de, de ajudar. Né? So I have, he says, I have great admiration for the work that is done with the, with the craft and with the weaving because it's done since like they plant the cotton and then the women beat the cotton and they create the cotton thread. So it's a very long process. And he, he finds it beautiful not only because he's Kashinawa. And the weaving work and the kene weaving work is, uh, is only, only the women are allowed to do it. And they sort of have to like, negotiate with the anaconda what it's called the the yushin bedu no eh? yeah. yushin. Yushin. yushin which is the eye of the soul so they negotiate with the anaconda to be able to receive the visions and be able to be master designers of the kinetic designs which are the language of the spirits and um, the men can paint but they don't weave so hmm? Não, o homem só, não, não só é. pinta. O homem nem. Sim, a é gente okay. pinta porque as mulheres reclamam we, de nós que. We paint <laughs> now because the women complain that we don't, we don't do it. <laughs> but it's usually it's the universe of the female, and there are particular rites of passage for the girl who is going to receive and learn how to weave, and they start since they're young, observing their moms, and when they're about 12 or 13, they go through a rite of passage and they receive all different kinds of. Um, eye drops from different plants that will allow them to receive the vision of these designs. And what's interesting with the designs that you can see is that the pattern ends like abruptly. And the idea is that you have to learn how to have the capacity to see the continuation of that design independent of it being expressed concretely. And that's as important, if not more important, to have the capacity to perceive the imaginary and create the imaginary world, this world without necessarily concretely, concretely being uh, uh, exposing. It's can, a really can, you, can you say that again? Yes, <laughs> I'll try. Um, the, 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 the idea, you, you mm -hmm. see a boundary, yes. but the idea is to look at it without seeing the boundary? Yeah, actually you see a boundary, but the, the designs, the way they're cut in the middle is sort of, they indicate that they continue outside of the paper or outside of the structure that's of the garment itself, of the garment itself. Okay. so and that's how they do it and the idea is that that the design continues gotcha. its flux eternally and so it's really important to be able to see that design continuing much more in the invisible world than having it expressed on paper or okay. mm -hmm. bom Tem mais coisas para informação, mas é, o tempo já esgotou, eu passo para o Marcelo. We're just going to pass to Marcelo. I was just passing some pictures of the work we do at our institute with, with the, these are healing circles there, and Jawabani working at the healing circles. And Marcelo is going to speak of some things. Depois eu. <laughs> um, so do you guys have like workshops where you know some people go to Peru, like ayahuasca journeys? Uh -huh. 
Do you guys have it as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We we don't have the infrastructure now to have long immersions, but we're building a larger structure that so that we can have seven to ten day uh, ayahuasca immersions. And the idea, since the institute works with sustainability, is sort of to integrate knowledge of permaculture and bioarchitecture and things that you can do here together with the shamanic experience as well. So we're going to do that there at the institute. But his his tribe, they have festivals once a year, and they receive people from all over the world there. One uh, one follows the festival, seven days. One One week, and then you can be with the live. You, you bring your hammock, which is how they sleep there. They have the homes, but they all live in hammocks, and. Um, you eat with them and you participate in all the dances and the festivities and in the ayahuasca rituals as well. Do you guys have a website? We, we have a the, yes, the, uh, it's, a, a letter or something. it's in Portuguese, Fires. but there's one one menu in English. It's called Floresta dos Unicornios. Unicornios. He says the link is in the paper. I think I have some cards later on. I think. Okay. Okay. One thing that scares me is about taking a psychedelic from my experience was being disintegrated where I felt that there was um, like an external evil intention coming in and um, taking over my thought process and my intention to mm -hmm. control and have a sense of myself almost like if you're walking on the ground and the ground suddenly becomes porous and you fall, mm -hmm. you know, anything that you rely on will be maniacally removed from your control. There's a, a discussion about protection. What is the understanding uh -huh. of evil uh -huh. Well, that's a great question because that's such... Disintegrated. Uh -huh. yeah. I want to answer something before your question that just that you just brought up that's so interesting is a lot of people that come to our institute that one of their main fears is will I lose control mm. and I'm like I hope you do <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do because if you feel like this life that you're living here you're in control of it I'm sorry you're probably not in control so it's really interesting because once you enter one of the first things that happens is people have this uh, misunderstanding that they're going to alter their consciousness or lose their consciousness and, and what we see happening is that you add another layer and you expand what you in your daily life very narrowly understand into a larger understanding and this larger spiritual dimension is so difficult to apprehend within the mental structure that we have. Great example, paradox. We don't know how to work with paradox. Our language is dual. Everything is either black or white or this or that or big or small or good and evil. And then you dive into a space where good and evil are part of the same weaving. That's really hard to um, process sometimes. Same thing with the, the time frame and the space. Going back now to your, your question. Um, what I, the orientation I give to people who start with the ayahuasca ritual is, first of all, it's really important the environment that you're at. So I don't call ayahuasca psychedelic because I don't think it's necessarily just working with the mind. It's really, there's, there's, this, there's a whole spiritual field and people, I've had people see, different people see the same presence of spirits in the place. So it's, really difficult to explain concretely where, you know, how does that manifest. But, so, what I, the orientation I give to a lot of the initiatives is, look, there is no such thing as a bad trip. There is no such thing as losing control, and there is no such thing as having an evil force um, sort of interfering with your process. All the bad, uncomfortable, dark, diabolic expressions that might happen in a, an ayahuasca journey, we understand them as fragments and parts of mirrored self, of your mirrored you, of your shadow aspect. And once you realize and you sort of just let yourself flow and completely trust the process, it's like curtains just open and you're able to understand where that comes from. 
And it's so it's really interesting to see people who would otherwise become desperate in a process feeling like there's, you know, there's masks or ugly things happening in the environment, and then realizing that those are expressions of their fears or of a particular trauma or of a particular uh, abandoned relationship, whether it's in this life or in another life, because people are taken to previous lives, and then they suddenly understand the entire conflict arrangement in their present families. It's really impressive. Um, once you start creating a different kind of relationship with the plants, you don't sink anymore. It, it, you don't have what, what, are, what we consider these bad trips. It's just, it has a lot more to do with the relationship that you build with the plants and the relationship of trust rather than just, you know, if I see darkness, that means that the plant is bad or I'm, I'm, I'm drowning. If I see light, and this has a lot to do with the understanding of healing. People feel like they want to heal without doing any work. They want to heal without looking at their wounds. They want to heal jumping phases from this point to a rainbow at the other side. Well, there's a long journey to be taken. And it's painful, but it's also a really beautiful process at the same time. And then we go back to the paradox that healing is suffering as well. Yeah, what